and Dr. Zach Williams and Flat Creek Baptist Church as we dive deeper into God's Word in this podcast titled New Horizons. Good morning. I am Pastor Zach Williams from Flat Creek Baptist Church in Gainesville, Georgia, and I'm so thankful that you are joining us today on this episode of New Horizons. Uh, Whether you're joining us on Glory 97.5, you're joining us on YouTube, or you're joining us on the New Horizons podcast, Uh, I'm just so grateful that each and every day you take time to dive into God's Word uh, with me. Now, let me say this real quickly. I normally try not to use this time as a commercial, uh, but I want to get a little free publicity here, if you will, and just throw out a commercial to you. If you are in the Gainesville area this coming Sunday, October the 18th, Um, At Flat Creek Baptist, we're going to be having an outdoor worship service in our courtyard. So uh, please, please, please make every arrangement you can to be here that day. The only thing you need to bring is a lawn chair. Just bring a chair that you have somewhere to sit. Now, some would also make the argument that if you go to church, you have to bring your Bible. I would encourage you to do the same. My mama always said, you don't go to school without a book, do you? So I would encourage you to bring your Bible too. But technically, the only thing we need you to bring is a lawn chair so that you can sit outside and enjoy some time with us on Sunday morning as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So come on out and join us. That begins at 11 a.m. on Sunday. Now, saying that, let's jump into the Word of God together. So we've been looking at 1 Corinthians 15, and we've been looking at the importance of the resurrection. In the last few days, we've been talking about grace and just the grace of God, how God's grace overwhelms us, how God's grace operates in us. Our salvation is a past event, a present reality, and a future hope. Now today, I want us to go one step further, and I want you to see how grace now obligates the believer. Now you might not like that word obligate. You might say, what do you mean by obligate. I'm actually supposed to do something with my salvation. I'm actually supposed to do something with the grace of God that has been given to me in my life. Well, let me read what the Bible says here in 1 Corinthians 15. Paul says, beginning in verse number 10, he says, however, or God's grace toward me was not ineffective. However, I worked more than any of them, yet not I, but God's grace that was with me. Okay, so what does Paul say? Paul says, I have been given this grace, and because I've been given this grace, now I'm supposed to do something with this grace. Okay, so let's go over to the book of James, and let's listen to what James has to say in the book of James, chapter number one. So James says, Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and he goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but one who does good works, this person will be blessed by what he does. So James says it's not just enough to hear the message of salvation. It's not just enough to receive the message of salvation, but now we are to do something with the grace that God has given us. We are to actually be active in our faith. Now, my associate pastor here at the church of Flat Creek is uh, my good brother, Caleb Lang. And he and I were having a conversation with a missions specialist yesterday. And in that conversation, uh, we began to just talk about uh, the missions in the church and how oftentimes people inside of the church have this attitude that um, they, they don't have to do anything with their salvation. They're just content to sit in their pew and watch the world pass them by. And although there may be a semblance of truth in that, meaning, meaning that a person 
can be saved and never do anything and still go to heaven, there is also a sense of disobedience in that because even though a person can do nothing and still go to heaven, friends, I will say to you, they get in by the skin of their teeth because the person who has truly been saved, who has truly been redeemed by the grace of God, how can you keep it to yourself? The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. When you taste the Lord and you experience Him, you want nothing more than for the world to know about the Savior who dwells inside of you. And so friends, today I'm just encouraging you. You know the Apostle Paul, when you think about him, he's the one who wrote this verse and he mentions the fact, he says, you know, I worked more than any of them, speaking of the Apostles. And if you go back to his conversion, and we think about this idea of him being obligated by the grace of God. He is saved on the road to Damascus. Ananias comes and touches his eyes. And then the Bible says that just after this, in verse 19 of Acts chapter number 9, Saul was with the disciples in Damascus for some days. Immediately, he began proclaiming in the synagogue that Jesus is the Son of God. So he is saved, but he didn't just sit He went to the synagogue and he began to preach Jesus. And then it goes on to say, but all who heard heard him were astounded and said, isn't this the man who was in Jerusalem and was destroying those who called on this name and then came here for the purpose of taking them as prisoners to the chief priest? But Saul, or Paul the apostle, grew more capable and kept confounding the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that this Jesus is the Messiah. So we see that Paul was not just a hearer of the word, he was a doer of the word, obligated by God's grace to go out and tell and teach the gospel to a lost and dying world. So friends, I want to encourage you today, if you have been saved by this grace, to go out and tell the world the gospel of Jesus Christ because you are obligated by this grace to go and tell them all. But you might say today, Pastor Zach, I don't know what to say. I'm a nervous that I'll say the wrong thing. Let me say this prayer over you in closing today from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. Paul said, Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. For this, I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might be bold enough in him to speak as I should. May God bless you as you go and tell the world about this glorious grace given in the Lord Jesus Christ.